Hi pearls, welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to another video. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you how to make a Roblox animation without a rig. I can't believe I haven't done this before, um, but I was looking through all my channel videos and realized I hadn't made a no rig animation tutorial, so I thought why not do it now? So let's go ahead and get started. First of all, I do really recommend that you watch my no rig Roblox JFX tutorial because that will teach you all the basics about Blender and everything that's really important to know before this video. I will leave that video linked in the description in case you haven't watched it yet or you don't know the basics of Blender. But anyways, with that being said, let's just get on started. So first of all, let's open up a Roblox Studio. And once you're there, click the classic base plate and import your character or the character of whoever you want to make this animation for. And then you can select R15 or R6, but I personally recommend R15 because it gives you more limbs to work with, so you can be more detailed with the poses you use. And then you can add anything else you want. It can be a prop or model, background, whatever you feel like doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in a dog, I think. I'm gonna type dog in the model section of the toolbox, and then let's see what we get. I'm gonna use this cute little dot me dog, so let's go ahead and import him over here. And I'm just gonna rotate the dog really quickly. Feel free to add whatever else you want, but I'm gonna go ahead and export this and then open up Blender. And by the way, for this video, I'm using Blender 2.79 because like I've said, this is my favorite version. However, if you'd like to see another tutorial for Blender 2.8 or 2.9, then let me know and I will definitely do that for you guys. Okay, ooh, let me go ahead and make a new file. So once you open up Blender, which yours will probably be gray, I just like to have my blue because I think it's pretty, <laughs> but open it up and at the top where it says Blender Render, Change that to Cycles Render, and then press X to delete the cube right here. And now we have to, of course, import our character. So click File at the top, Import, and Wavefront.obj, and then find your file. Then at the bottom, click this little snowball and change it to Material. Then at the bottom, click Object, Transform, and Origin to Geometry. Now I want to explain some things. So down at the bottom right here, this is our little timeline. So this is where you'll be able to see the amount of frames you're using and everything like that. So I like to make it a bit bigger just so I can see everything that I'm doing. Now, whenever you want to start animating, you have to click this little red circle at the bottom so that you can create different keyframes, basically. So once you click this button, it'll basically tell Blender that you want to animate. So I'm going to click that. And now I'm going to choose what pose I want to start with. Whenever you click a limb and you move it, so for example, let's just say I put this arm over here. As you can see, I have a little yellow line on the timeline. Again, if I move that like over there, you can see another yellow line is formed. That basically is a marking of like the movement your character is doing and between what frames. So between this frame right here and this frame right here, my character's arm is going to move outwards, if that makes sense. That's something to keep in mind when you're working with like timing and stuff. So the first thing I'm gonna do is while I'm on frame one, as you can see right here, I'm gonna go ahead and position my character. So this is the position I'm gonna start off in. Once I have my starting position, and then I'm gonna click view and camera and position my camera where I want it to start. I now have everything where I want it to start. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this little like red line and I'm gonna move it to 20 frames just by clicking on 20. And now I can move where I want my character to be in 20 frames. So let's say in 20 frames, I want the arm and this hand right here to be moving downwards like this, kind of replicating what I have on the other side. And then this arm to go back outwards like that. Something I forgot to mention that I really should have is that if you want to animate something, you have to make sure you have a starting position for it, which I kind of forgot to add. So before I start, I have to make a starting position. So this is where I want it to be at the first frame. And then at 20 frames, I want it to be over here. So sorry about that. So then at 60 frames, let's say I want this to be all the way outwards. And I'm gonna have the dog move like this so that it looks like she's petting it. Now if I go to the start and click play, this is what I see, which I think is pretty good. So now at the bottom where it says start, I'm gonna leave it at one, but I'm gonna change it to where my animation ends. So mine ends at frame 40. So I'm gonna change this from 250 to 40. Now I'm gonna go into the rendered view just to see what this will look like. And as you can see, it's pretty dark. So I'm gonna go to the world and click ambient occlusion. And also the background is gray, which I don't really like. You can add a background by making sure that your little red line is at the one or the zero. Then clicking add, clicking mesh, and then clicking plane. And then go to this top part over here, which you can get by pressing the plus button. And then at rotation for X, change it to 90. And then press S to make it big and then move it to where you want it to be, so that it's like that. And then I'm gonna drag this part out of it so I can see this material button, click new, and then change it to be, change it to be like a nice blue. I'll go for like this light one, kind of almost like a light gray white, but I think it's pretty. And then the last thing I'm gonna show you how to do is how to animate the camera. So click the camera, and you'll know it's clicked when you have an outline on it. So I wanted to start maybe like over here, this is good. And then at 20 frames, I'm gonna have it zoom in a bit more. 
And at 40, I'll have like over here so that you can like see the dog a bit more. And then that's what I'll do for this. And then I'm gonna head over to the camera button and I'm gonna leave this all here, except at the bottom where it says PNG, I'm actually gonna change this to FFmpeg video. And then with an animation, you need to save it before you render it. So I'm gonna click this little file button next to the TMP and choose where I'm going to save it. So for me, that's on my desktop because on my desktop, I have a folder called Save GFXs, which is where I save all my animations. So I'm just gonna click accept. And now it is saved on my desktop in that folder. And then if I go to rendered, that looks good to me. So you can obviously spend more time adding all these details and stuff, but I'm just gonna try and make it as simple as possible for this tutorial so you can follow along. But now if I click this little arrow at the bottom, I can see what my animation will look like all the way through. It's kind of short, but that's okay. But I'm gonna scroll up and click animation and I'm gonna let this render and I'll be back when it's all done. Hi, so my computer died while it was rendering and so I lost the animation, but you got to see kind of what it looked like before and hopefully if you do this, you can get a really cool result, at least one that actually saves. <laughs> um, but anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. And with everything being said, I hope you have an amazing rest of your day, and I'll talk to you all soon. Bye, pearls!